Good evening, everyone. This is Gary Bennett at Excel Me. Welcome to class number two. Tonight, we're going to be talking about chapter two um, inside my book, uh, Swift for Absolute Beginners, and we'll be covering playgrounds and more programming basics. All right, so hopefully you've had a chance to um, review the video in chapter one. And also, if you'd like to see what's coming up in our additional courses, if you go to here to my free video section, you can see the schedule on what's coming up here in the next couple weeks. And again, every Monday night at 5.30 Pacific time is the course, this particular class. And you can uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel to get the recordings. And you can attend the live sessions if you're listening to the recording by clicking on the webinar information and um, entering the registration information for GoToWebinar. Then you can attend live and ask questions. And for those of you that are attending live, feel free to ask questions at the end of the class. All right, Just, and you can do that by typing in the question panel in the GoToWebinar control section. So let's go ahead and get started talking a little bit more about uh, chapter two in the book and playgrounds. So we finished up in chapter one, just entering, loading uh, Xcode, entering some basic information in playgrounds, and making sure that everything works. Tonight we're going to learn more about the integrated development environment that Playgrounds provides and how to um, start writing our application, start seeing the purpose of using Playgrounds. I use Playgrounds for the first four sections of my book because it allows us to focus on... Um, the development process without getting tied up in the sophisticated IDE and compiling our application and um, sort of having to learn a lot in order to do just a very little. Playgrounds allows just the opposite. We can uh, type things in and see the results immediately without getting tied up in the integrate development environment. But it's all going to be applicable um, when we start learning to write our iPhone applications, but we need to learn the syntax first. Okay, so the, this area right here is called the editor. This is where we're gonna type information in. This information over here, this, te this um, pane, is called the results area. And that's where we get the results. As we type things in, results automatically are available for us to see. We have little icons over here that we can go ahead and expand and see if we have groups of data that come back, what that data looks like. And so we can expand that and see a little bit more. But we'll learn more about that later as we start seeing uh, larger chunks of information being um, returned. Okay, so here we have our first sort of hello world program. The application starts. It's going to import what's called the UI kit. The UI kit is what we're going to use to um, visually display information here in Playgrounds. So it's importing that UI kit library behind the scenes. There's really nothing more that we have to do with that. After that, we declare our first variable, or actually the template for Playgrounds uh, made this first variable for us. It's a var, and it is a S, it says str. That's the name of the variable, str. Actually, it would be more appropriate. Let's call it my string. okay? And my string holds the content of hello playground, whatever is in double quote. Now, Swift is smart enough to know, hey, this has taken a string of characters, this from what's ever in double quotes. I know that this is of type string. It holds string variables, variables, string information. As opposed to I, I holds, it's not in double quotes, it is a type integer. It knows that this is this i holds integer values. And an integer is a number, positive or negative, that doesn't have a decimal point. So 5, 15, 100, minus 50, those are all integers. Okay, so Xcode knows when you make an a, a variable and assign it, what type of data it's going to have. Okay, now um, a my string cannot hold an integer after it's de uh, declared, and likewise, an, an integer can't hold a string after it. They're different types of data. Okay, so that's why I'm able to do um, i is equal to i plus three. So it's going to assign five to i, and because we said var, var means it's going to vary, meaning I can go ahead and change the contents of i after I've already assigned it to five. 
So it's very cool. So this right here I can see i is equal to 5. And now I can go ahead and add 3 to it. So i is 5 here on line 9. I'm adding 3. That makes 8. And then I can see the result here. And then I can also print it with the print line command, print line i. Okay. Now, if I want to make a constant, meaning I'm going to assign it and I don't ever want to change it, I would use the word let. We're going to learn more about let in chapter 3. And uh, we'll say x here is equal to 7. And now once I make that assignment for x, it doesn't vary. It's a constant. I can't say um, x is equal to x plus 7. Oops. I can type correctly. Okay. So if I try that, let x is equal to 7, and now I try to print that out. Look, I'm not getting, I'm not getting any results. I, I really have a compiler error here, and I'm not able to see, um, I'm not able to see the results yet because um, uh, Swift is not able to change the contents after I assign it. All right, so here's my editor area. Here's my results. As I type in things, if I if I um, if I say, for example, um, mistype something or misspell it like this here, I'm not going to see my results get updated. And more specifically, I'll typically get a little red um, um, icon right here saying that, indicating that there's an error on that particular line, as I'm ha having right here. So I'm getting an error on that particular line. It's not able to update it. All right. Um, I'll go ahead and stop the recording here, and I'll take any questions live on Chapter 1 and 2 or on any topic that you have in the book. Thanks for attending, and I look forward to seeing you next Monday. Um, at 5.30 Pacific time for our next topic. Good night.